In this video, we'll be taking a look at setpoint configuration on the PM50A analog panel meter. The PM50 allows users to configure setpoint alarms to trigger when the measured input value falls outside of certain parameters, such as going above or below a setpoint value. When a setpoint alarm is triggered, the PM50 will display an enunciator banner by default to draw attention to the unit. Each setpoint also has a corresponding solid state relay output which closes when the alarm is active. For example, setpoint 1 controls output 1, and setpoint 2 controls output 2. For demonstration purposes, I've pre-configured my PM50A signal input to scale a 0 to 20 milliamp signal from 0 to 500 gallons per minute. In this video, I'll configure a setpoint alarm to display an enunciator banner when that simulated flow meter measures above 300 gallons per minute. I've already logged into my PM50 using the admin credentials, so I'll click once on device to get started. From here, click once on setpoint configuration. Next, click once on the setpoint configuration menu item to expand it. Under the Select Setpoint section, you'll see that you have two setpoints available by default, labeled Setpoint 1 and Setpoint 2. If you have a dual or quad relay module installed, you'll see additional setpoints which correspond to the number of relays, for a grand total of up to six setpoints. In this example, we will only be configuring setpoint 1, which we can see is selected by default. Under the setpoint assignment section, there is a drop down menu where we can choose from none, relative, absolute, or totalizer. A relative setpoint triggers from the relative input value, which includes the display offset value, whereas an absolute setpoint triggers from the absolute input value, which does not include the offset. Finally, a totalizer setpoint triggers from the accumulated totalizer value. For this example, I'll select absolute since no offset is being used on my signal input. Once that selection has been made, you'll see a number of new settings available starting with setpoint action. Here we can use the drop down menu to select how we would like the setpoint value to be compared to the measured input value in order to be triggered. Options include absolute high or low deviation high or low, and outside or inside band. You'll notice these selections have various hysteresis options, which can help to prevent the setpoint from bouncing rapidly between the active and inactive states when the measured value is very close to the setpoint value. In this example, I'll be selecting absolute high with unbalanced hysteresis because I want to trigger the setpoint alarm when the measured flow value goes above the setpoint value and I want it to stay triggered until the measured flow value goes well below the setpoint value. For complete details on all of the various setpoint actions and hysteresis options, please reference the PM50A user manual. The next setting we see here is configure list A slash B. Each setpoint has a list A value and list B value, with list A being active by default. This feature allows users to quickly change the setpoint value between list A and list B values as needed with a properly configured function key or user input. I'll be leaving this set to list A as we will not be using list B for this example. The next setting is setpoint value for list A. This is the value that will be compared to the measured value in order to trigger the setpoint alarm. I'll enter a value of 300 here, which will trigger our setpoint alarm when the PM50 measures 300 GPM or greater. The next setting we see here is hysteresis. I'll put a value of 50 in here for the example, and with unbalanced hysteresis, this means that if our measured value were to rise above 300, the setpoint alarm would trigger and stay active until the measured value falls to 250. The next setting is setpoint enunciator type. If this is set to off, the enunciator will be removed entirely. If set to normal, this will be a solid unchanging enunciator when active. If set to flash, the enunciator will blink on and off when active. Finally, if this is set to reverse phase, the enunciator banner will be present only when the setpoint alarm is not active. For this example, I'll be leaving this set to normal. Next up, we see Enunciator Color and Setpoint Active Color. The Enunciator Color refers to the color of the banner which appears around the edge of the screen when the setpoint alarm is active. 
Setpoint Active Color is the color used in the Setpoint Status widget and icons to show the active state of the configured setpoints individually. One thing to note here is that red has precedence over orange for both of these color settings. The next settings we see here are the on delay and off delay. On delay is the time in seconds that the setpoint alarm is delayed from turning on after the trigger point is reached. Off delay is the time in seconds that the setpoint alarm is delayed from turning off once the setpoint alarm is no longer being triggered. I won't be using any delays for this example, so I'll leave both of these set to their default value of zero. The next setting here is Reset Action, with choices of Auto, Latch 1, or Latch 2. Auto Reset Action will automatically turn off when trigger conditions are no longer met. Latch 1, or Latch with Immediate Reset Alarms, will stay on until they are reset with a function key or user input, which can be done even if trigger conditions are still present. Latch 2, or Latch with Delay Reset Alarms, will stay on until they are reset with a function key or user input, and trigger conditions are no longer present. For this example, we will be using the auto reset action, which won't require any form of manual reset. The next setting here is output logic, with options of normal or reverse. If reverse were chosen, the setpoint alarm would be active when the trigger conditions were not met. For this example, I'll be leaving this set to normal. The final setting here is setpoint standby operation. When set to yes, the alarm is disabled after a power-up until the trigger point is crossed. For this example, I'll be leaving this set to no. At this point, we can click save and navigate to the home page to test our newly configured setpoint alarm. What I'll do now is simulate a flow of greater than 300 GPM, which should trigger our setpoint alarm and display an enunciator banner around the edge of the screen. This banner will be visible from both the web server and the screen of the PM50 unit itself. We should also see the indicator within our setpoint status widget change from green to red, indicating that the alarm is active. I'll start to increase the flow now. As you can see, the setpoint alarm triggered as expected when we went above 300 GPM, so things are working so far. Here's a quick look at the PM50 unit itself, and you can see that the Annunciator banner is visible there as well. I will now start to decrease the flow. You can see that the alarm is staying active as expected, even though we're below 300 GPM. This is due to our hysteresis value of 50. And now that we are lower than 250 GPM, which is our set point minus hysteresis, we can see that the alarm automatically reset as expected. And that's it for PM50A set point configuration. Thank you for watching.